With Cannon Club's announcement that it would open its doors next year for the first time since 1972, the Prince reached out to the Cannon Dial Elm Graduate Board for a special video tour of the famous club. Although very much still under construction, renovation and furnishing will be complete in time for potential sophomore bickeries to eat meals at the club starting in September. One gets a slight chill walking into Cannon. The place creaks a bit, as though the club is reminding you of its yesteryear that Princeton students have so enthusiastically mythologized. This first room is the club's living room, a space that the head of the graduate board, Warren Crane, says will be filled with couches and lounge chairs. Just outside the room is a patio, and in the club's backyard is a parking lot, which will be also used for activities like basketball and volleyball. At the end of the hallway on the left is the dining room, which will be expanded by knocking down a few walls to create an even larger communal space. Behind the dining room will be the buffet area, and behind that the kitchen. There is little actual construction work left to be done, but contractors will spend the coming months finishing the club by paneling the rooms and filling them with furniture, appliances, and other necessities. If you turn right after the foyer, you will find the billiards room with a bay window. Towards the back of the club are the music room and a card room. Cannon holds a unique place in Princeton lore. Once named one of the top three jock houses in the country by Sports Illustrated, countless stories have circulated on campus about the raucous, even dangerous parties held there during the 60s. Off to the right from the second floor landing will be the club's computer room, which Crane says will have 12 or 14 workstations for members. The entire right side of the second floor will be devoted to student workspace, in fact, as the club will house a library in addition to a boardroom, which will hold a large table in the middle and plenty of chairs for students to sit and work together. Outside, there will be a small terrace for members to relax on. That door, currently blocked for construction, opens into another stairwell that leads up to the third floor, which will house the officers' quarters. Next year, the 10 singles will house a group of rising juniors and seniors who reached out to the graduate board about living in the club for a year. Perhaps the main attraction upstairs for many bickeries will be the private theater the grad board plans on installing in this room. Crane says the platform will be erected for a stadium-style seating with an occupancy of about 30, and members will be able to watch movies and TV, most likely screened from a projection system. Walking down into the Cannon basement, the thoughts about Princeton legend and notoriety return. With 3,100 square feet dedicated to three tap rooms, it's hard to imagine the club ever filling to capacity just based on its sheer size. The first tap room is the green room. The grad board will install a bar in this corner of the room. While Princeton was not yet co-ed when Cannon was open, the green room was still infamous for allegedly barring women when the club did host girls from nearby universities. The second tap room resides in the middle of the basement and will feature a rectangular bar in its center. Just in back will be a small game room with a few arcade style games to entertain members and guests. Crane says the beer cooler will hold upwards of 30 kegs, which could possibly be a necessity. Cannon set an alleged record in 1968 by consuming 52 kegs during house parties weekend. Finally, the famous red bar room will have yet another tap in it and likely serve as the club's main dance floor. Bands that come to perform will set up at the front end of the room. Freshmen are still filing their applications to become members of next spring's Bicker Committee, and with about 120 expected submissions, there seems to be plenty of demand. Crane says the grad board will choose its committee based on which students are most widely selected by their peers as ideal candidates for the position. The club will then bicker a group of their sophomore classmates of which they hope to select roughly 110 in order to renew Cannon as a fun new 11th eating club on Prospect Avenue.